Hey folks, welcome to a new S3 security video. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can add a simple S3 bucket policy to enforce the use of SSL communication with the bucket and the objects within the bucket. I thought before we did that, though, we just very quickly review what we did in our previous uh, previous session. We've got our S3 bucket here. Uh, I deployed that through CloudFormation. We're, we're going to build this CloudFormation template out a little more today. And if you remember, if you caught the first video, what we did was we enabled default encryption on this bucket using our own uh, customer managed uh, key in KMS. And we also ensured under permissions that we enabled the uh, block public access. Okay. And I can show you that in the CloudFormation template. So if we go over here in the CloudFormation template, there's the little chunk of code that uh, enables default encryption and how we refer to our key. And then we've got the bucket policy, or sorry, the bucket access configuration set here and we're blocking all access. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a policy to this today and ensure that anything or anyone communicating with this bucket must use an SSL connection or we're gonna deny that access. And this is actually really quite easy. What we've got here is a document from AWS support that shows us exactly what we need to do. And since we write our templates in YAML, I'm just going to borrow this and put it into a converter here. Maybe, try that again, there we go. And this is what we need, okay? So let's go ahead and build this. I'm going to get rid of that window. We don't need our KMS environment. But I am going to look up the CloudFormation S3 bucket policy settings because we'll just we'll use the documentation to actually create this. So here, here's what we've got. We have to refer to the bucket and we have to set up our policy document. Super easy. And you can see an example down here. So we're just going to borrow this example. So let's do it. What we want to do is we want to make sure that oops, the S3 bucket exists before we try to create this bucket policy. So we're going to put the depends on. It's not going to matter in this video because I've already deployed the uh, the environment just to show you kind of what we had. But if we were building this out from scratch, we want to make sure that that bucket is there before we try to apply a policy to it. So we'll use the depends on attribute for that. And now all we need is the bucket reference. So you can see we've got an example right here. So we're going to say bucket ref bucket zero and then we need our policy document and this is going to start with oh, I think it's always actually I think there's a statement in front of that yeah policy oh no we got policy document statement there we go and we're gonna say action is deny so we're setting here an explicit deny and remember in IAM if you have an explicit deny this will always win so it's going to take precedence over anything else that exists uh, that would potentially affect the security settings of, of this bucket and we're going to go back over here and we're just gonna instead of cutting and pasting it we're gonna walk through so we're gonna apply this sorry this is supposed to be effect action is going to be s3 star and, and just to make sure that we're clear on this, to the left of the colon is the service, to the right of the colon is the action. What we're saying now is deny all actions against the S3 service. Okay. And we're going to apply it to this specific bucket. And in this case, we are going to, I'm going to set a to do here. And I'll, I'll show you why in a second. I have to look this up. So this is going to be for the objects. And this is going to be for the bucket itself. And the reason I'm just putting a couple simple to-dos in here is uh, I'm going to come back. I can't remember off the top of my head how we can refer to that. We want to refer dynamically to the bucket and the objects within it. And I just need to make sure that we understand the return value coming from that uh, bucket logical resource that we created earlier. So we'll leave those for now. And then we need our condition statement. And this is a Boolean statement. So evaluate it to true or false. And we've got AWS secure transport 
is false. Okay. And you'll notice that they, they have a principle. So I actually like to put the principle up here. And it's just star. So what we're saying here is deny uh, all S3 actions against a bucket, the objects within that bucket, if the uh, whoever is or whatever is connecting to this is not using SSL, secure transport. Okay? And the principle basically just says all users. It's a, it's a way to identify a specific user. So if you had, uh, let's say, let's say you wanted to only apply this to um, apply this to every user except one person, then you could use a not principle and you could put the ARN in here for the IAM user that you didn't want this to apply to. But really what we're doing here is we're creating that kind of blanket statement to ensure that everything uses SSL. We just need these two references now. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go back, we're done with this. And I want to go back to here and I want to get the return values that are coming from the bucket. And we can just see here. Okay, so we've got a ref should do it. Okay. Actually, do we need the ARN? I can't remember now already. Yes, we need the full ARN. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, sorry, I got to get the right tab. There we go. We're going to actually use the ARN. So we're going to do this. And in this case, we are going to do something a little different. We're going to use a substitute command. I wonder if the substitute command is actually an easier way to do it. So I'll show you what we're going to do instead. I, I like the, the sub command instead. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to use this as our reference. So I'm just going to throw it in here for now. And we're going to construct this using the sub command instead. Oops. And now we can just go bucket zero. That's an easier statement. Okay, so that's going to cover the bucket. And then we can just take this and add on the end slash star. And these are all of the objects in that bucket. That's a, a better way to do it. It's, I think it's easier to read. Okay, and I got a space there that we don't need. So at this point, we are going to push this update and we should be good. So we're gonna say, git, maybe git, there we go. And let's see if we got everything typed properly in that in that new bucket policy. Let's see. We'll know quickly. Yeah, okay. Validation. And really what we're looking for here is a, a change set for that S3 bucket. That'll probably show up here pretty quickly. There we go. So if we look at the change set, what we can see is we're adding a policy and obviously there's no replacement here because the policy at this point doesn't exist. So we're just gonna execute this. And if we got that policy structured properly, there we go, all done. And if we go back to our bucket policy, or sorry, our bucket, and we refresh, we now have a bucket policy that's assigned to the bucket and the objects within the bucket, and we're denying all access to S3 if the entity that is make, uh, making a request to either the object or the bucket itself is not using SSL. So that's a really short video today uh, to show you how this works. We'll continue the series out and continue to layer more security options on top of this bucket until we can really ensure that we know exactly who has access and, and what actions they can perform. So until next time, get out there, build great things, and. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs>